All right, so let's get started. Um, before we start, let's first load the data set. Let's load, I mean, the first five rows and have a look at what we are dealing with right now. All right, so we have cement, slag, ash, water, super plastic, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, age, and then strength over here. All right, so this is what you're going to deal with, and the strength is our target variable. Um, you can also call it the dependent variable, and then um, cement all the way to age becomes our independent variable. All right, so what we can do over here is to actually separate our data set into dependent and independent. All right, so this um, strength here becomes our dependent. All right, it becomes our dependent variable. And uh, we're going to name this um, dependent variable. We're going to name it as Y. All right, and then apart from that, um, everything here, apart from that, everything from the age all the way to cement right we're going to call everything as x right we're going to call everything as x and for this y we get, i mean for this strength we're going to name it as as y all right so moving on that's what you're going to do so that um when we later on we want to scale our data um there will be nothing called um data leaking all right we don't want our data our model to learn from from the target which is um, going to be the testing right I mean, we don't want the data to learn from this, but if we do that, if we um, if we don't separate this into dependent and independent and we scale it, then uh, somehow it's going to take into consideration this column to, to make the scaling. For example, if you're using the Z-score, all right, if you're using the Z-score, I mean, Z-score is calculated as each value, all right, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. All right, so he's going to consider each of these. If it is going to calculate the mean, all right, for each of them, and it's going to say um, this value minus the mean, all right, each of them, all right, divided by the standard deviation. Then it will do that for that. It will do that for all of them over here, all right. You do that for all of them over here. But taking into consideration everything, including this strength, which is our target um, variable, will make. Um, somehow we'll take this 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 column into consideration to do this normalization or to do this scaling and our data our model is actually somehow going to taste whatever is in here and later on if you use this um, if you use this 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 testing right if you consider this as a testing data set right and use it to test the model the model is actually going to perform very very well on it but if a new data set comes in right which the model has never tested it, then it's going to perform very poorly. So initially, maybe uh, when you tested it, you got maybe about 90%. If a new data set comes in, you're going to have maybe about um, 85% or maybe as low as maybe 60%, right? Because um, the data set, the model was overfitting, all right? It was overfitting, has already seen the data. So think of this as an exam question paper where the students um, have seen the question paper and then at the end of the exams, you brought the question paper into an exam and I mean, everybody scores very well. But if you bring any um, other question paper which they have not seen before, they are going to perform very, very bad. All right, so think of it that way. And we don't want um, our, our model to perform very bad. We want a model that can generalize in production. All right, and so that's why we prevent what is called um, what is called the data leak. All right, what is called the data leak or the data leakage. Right, you can call it a le data leakage. All right, that's what we try to prevent. So we don't want the paper to leak, or we don't want the model to actually test at the test data. We don't want it to leak. All right, so we try to prevent that by dividing first dividing our data set into dependent and then um, independent. I mean, to dependent and independent, right? All right. So that's what you're going to do over here. So moving on, um, that's what we're going to do down here. So now you can see over here, right? You can see over here that we are picking everything here. We are picking everything. We are just dropping the strength. And if we drop the strength, whatever is left is all these columns. All right. So we store everything that is left, right, in what is called eggs. All right, and then uh, we just drop the strength. If we drop the strength, whatever is left, right, becomes um, whatever is left becomes. Let me bring my pen here. If we drop only this column, right? If we drop this column, let's say this column is not there. That's what we are doing here. We are dropping that, and then we are showing that is in the column, right? As in C cos one, and then everything that is left over here, right? Everything that is left. 
we just this. We store everything in what is called the X, right? So that becomes our independent variable. We store everything, right? And then later on, what we we what we store this. Remember, we say that this is our our target, and that becomes our dependent, right? So we store everything here that is left over here, right? We store it in Y. So that is what is happening over here, all right? So moving on, um, after that, we can now um, scale the data, right, using the z-score without um, causing any data leak or something like that. All right, so we apply that on the x. Remember, the x consists of the rest without the strength. All right, so the x consists of everything here, right, Every, everything here without the strength. All right, so we scale that, all right, and then we just put it in a data frame. You can ignore that part, right? But uh, we just put it in a data frame. You can you can ignore this step, actually. Okay. So uh, then from that we can now do our training and then testing. In this case, we are dividing um I mean our data into in the ratio of seventy thirty. All right, seventy percent for training and thirty percent for um testing. All right. So that's why the test size over here is um zero point three. All right. And then the skill data that we did here is skilled. All right. Whatever, whatever in that S skill that we are going to use for training, we will store it in what is called the S train. And whatever is in the um, S skill that we are going to use for testing, we store it in S test. All right. And then we pick the Y here. Whatever is in the Y that we're going to use for training, we, we store it in what is called the Y train. And whatever is in Y that we will be using for testing, we store it in what is called the Y test. All right. And then after that, um, since we're going to choose these randomly, right, since it's going to be done randomly using the um, train test split, right, function here, the train test split, um, we set the random state equals one. So that's uh, anytime we run this, we are going to get the same random numbers, all right? Otherwise, when we run this, we're going to generate the different random numbers altogether. All right, so to prevent that, we set the random state equals one. So now let's start by building a different number of those on this um, train test split that we just did. So we're starting with random forest, all right? So we, we first initialize our random forest, all right? And then call it model, all right? So this is the model that we're going to do. And then we make the model fit, right? Just like learn, right? Fit means like learn. This is where the machine learns, right? So learn, then learn from what? Learn from the X train and learn from the Y train, all right? So when we do that, done, okay? Now, um, over here, we can make some predictions, right? After our model has already learned, we can use it to make some predictions. So now you see that we're using the edge test, right? So this is what uh, our model did not learn from. So we're going to use that one to make some predictions, all right? We're going to use that to make some predictions. Um, I can even print the predictions that it's making so that you can um, see over here, all right? Let me bring that one here. Okay, so now if I check this prediction that we have over here, uh, let me run this again. Let me go and run this from here. Let me run it from here. All right, so I'm going to run this. Now, if I check this, so I predict. All right, if I check it, I see some of the values that it is predicting over here. Okay, now you can see that it's predicting some of the values, right? Predicting some of the y. Now uh, this is this is this is what it is predicting. Some of the strength values here that is predicted, right? That is what it is actually doing over here. So let me just take that one out, and then we can actually uh, move on. Okay. Now we can check the score and then see how well it is doing. So initially, I'm going to check it on the training data set, right? This is the data set that it has already learned from it. So obviously, it's going to do well, right? It's just like a question paper that the student has already learned from the question paper. So obviously, they will score very well, all right? So um, if we perform the score on that, right? This is our model. This is the model that we have built, 
right so i'm going to check the score how it, well it is doing on the training all right so if i check that you can see here that it is doing like um 98 percent all right it's doing 98 percent all right but um however if i check this on the testing all right if i check it the same thing if i check it on a test score i mean on the test data that i has not learned from let's see how it is actually going to do you see that it's doing 87 percent all right so obviously on the training data is going to do very well more than uh on the testing data all right but uh and the normal sequence that is supposed to be a bit closer i mean more closer than it is right now so we can see that um the model is how somehow overfitting all right it's supposed to a bit i um, mean come closer all right the um the performance on the training and the performance on the testing is supposed to a bit uh, come closer not this as 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 widely as we are seeing over here all right so um we can also check the score i mean the, the score on uh, uh, on the y test and uh and the prediction right obviously it's going to give us the same thing over here and we're going to use um this that's why we're storing it over here we'll get to know it in a few minutes all right Okay, so um, this is the error that it's doing by using the mean squared error. We can also find the error that it's doing between, I mean, um, comparing the Y test and also the prediction that we did, we can see um, the error that it is actually, actually um, doing, all right? So we can see that we have our 32 here, right? Which is um, a bit huge. We need to actually, um, I mean, we need to, we need to actually tune tune the parameters and then see how it's actually going to minimize this error remember what we actually do is to minimize these errors all right so this is the mean square error if you remember uh, how the mean squared error works um, this is the mean square error in action we learned this in our previous classes all right so you can watch the previous class video all right so if you if you if you if you um if you're watching, let me just highlight that i mean if you let's say we have some data points over here all right we have some data points over here all right so what we do is that we try to find the distance between each data point and the regression line each data point and then the regression line all right we try to find that so this error is what we try to minimize all right so that is what we find as the mean squared error all right so that's what we actually try to minimize and that's what we actually um try to to always to to always minimize using the mean square so the the smaller this is the better it is all right so you can watch the previous videos i mean with regards to this and then see the formula how this uh mean square error is being calculated and all right so uh, moving on we can actually also see um put everything in a data frame and then um put these algorithms and the uh and the accuracy side by side so that later on we can actually see how they are doing and perform um i mean make make selection make choice out of these algorithms as i said we're going to build several algorithms right different different algorithms this is this is our random forest and we're going to do a lot of them so we're going to create a data frame which consists of the algorithm right the name of the algorithm and then the accuracy of the algorithm that's why initially i stored the accuracy in the variable called accuracy r just r represent a regression here right so that i i will see that this is the regression accuracy okay this is the regression accuracy all right, then now I'm just explicitly indicating that the index should be one. This is, um, you can ignore that part, right? Um, it will do that automatically for you, but I'm just explicitly doing that. All right, then I'll set the, the column names to be algorithm and the accuracy. So you can see over here that I'm putting the algorithm, the name of the algorithm as random forest, and then the accuracy that we obtain over there. All right, so I'll keep on adding all the other accuracies into this. All right, so at the end of the, of the at the end of the project, we will get to know which algorithm is performing better, which one we need to um, hyper tune, which one we need to actually go with and perform more hyper tuning on it and then get better accuracy. All right. So let's start and do some um, keyword cross validation on this um, same regression. All right. Let's start to do that. OK, so we are going to say over here, we're going to just um, choose K to be um, 20. And uh, I hope I hope um, in the previous class you got to know why we choose with how we choose this k all right 
Um, if you don't know, you I mean the video is available. You can just watch it within. Um, I think it's about just it's a short short video. You can easily get to know why we choose uh, how we choose this key, right? So um, the random state here you can even ignore since um, the shuffle is already false by default, all right? Otherwise, explicitly you can set the shuffle into true, all right? And then. Um, you indicated this otherwise you can just ignore this i'm showing you because most people do that and uh they get into an error or something like that which get more confusion but you can ignore that all right and then over here um this is our cross our cross um vowel score that we're going to check all right we're going to check it on our model remember we stored our model name as model right remember here when we're doing the fitting and the score and everything when we started fitting we just say that our it is called model. This is just a variable name we chose. We could choose any other name at, at, at all, right? So that's how we called it. And over here, we are putting that and we're checking it on our X and then the Y, right? And then the the, the CV, which is the cross validation to be um, equal to this um, um, key folder that we created over here, all right? And then after that, we find the mean of that if you check, um, if you check the K results, I mean, See this key result here. If I run this, and then we see it over here. All right. Now, uh, if you do this, you see that it's giving you that warning that certain random state has no um, effects and shuffle is is already false. So that's why I'm telling you that you can even ignore this part. All right. That's why I was telling you that you can even um, ignore that part. All right. So um, if I show you this key results right show you this key results so uh, i'm going to run this again since i did not run it from initial stage all right i'm going to run this now it's still working right you can see python 3 here is still running all right Or probably I should run it from you. So let, let me go and interrupt this kernel so that I can actually um, run it. Okay, so now I'm going to run it again by running this part. Okay. Okay, now working. So I'm going to all the way to the cross validation part. So it's still it's still working over here, right? It's going to show us the accuracy that we have. Then after that, I'll also show you this key results. So it's still running. It's going to take a little bit of time. All right, so as we can see here for the um, k fold cross validation, we are having 76% over here, right? So let me show you what is happening here. Now, we are, we are finding the accuracy, which caused the mean of the absolute value, uh, value of this k result, right? So what is this k result and what is inside there? So now, if I run this k result here, you can see that we have a lot of results based on this, right? We see that the fold, right? Like we the uh, CV equals this, right? Was this and remember we are setting k to be 20 so we have uh, about um, 20 different experiments that we are doing over here all right about 20 experiments that we're doing here one two three four uh one two three four five yeah about 20 experiments that we are doing here so with the, all these different experiments we are going to get our crazies so we find the mean of that right we find the mean of that and then uh we we, we also want to the absolute value of that so that we have the positive part all right then after that uh, finding the mean of that we are getting 76 um, percent out of that right so i'm going to add the 76 percent to what we are doing over here right the algorithm name and then the accuracy so that's what i'm going to do over here all right so um if you remember we have we have this accuracy set here all right so i'm going to put this accuracy here all right that is the accuracy and then um, this random array is just, it's just the 
It's just this one that I created. I just name it that way. You can name it any name that you want. Then I can cut the results and then the random, right? The random read that I have here. And then I add it to this, right? So if I if I run that, I will get this. So random forest, this is what we have it. And then the random forest regressor, the K food on the random forest regressor, we have it this 70 um six percent. So I add it to this. So I'll keep on adding all the other algorithms and then we will see how um which one is doing better. So now let's let's also take um a look at the gradient boosting regressor, right? So we're going to um, um see what um, this gradient boosting regressor is also going to um, do all right. So as 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 we did for for I um, mean this algorithm over here for the random forest, right? We first initialize it, then we fit it. The same way we're going to do over here, right? The same thing we're going to do. We are going to initialize it, right? We're going to initialize it here. Okay, model gradient boosting regressor. We initialize it, and then we fit it here. Okay, then we fit it here. So if we do that, everything goes well. Then after that, we can do some predictions, right? Just like we did for for that, just like we did for for this. We made some predictions, right? After fitting the model, we made some predictions. So the same way we're going to do for this, we made, we're going to make some predictions and we need this variable, which, I mean, we make the predictions, then we store it in this variable. All right, so let's check the model performance uh, on the training data. All right, these are the data set that it has already learned from. All right, so let's check the performance of that. If we do that, we see that we have about 95%, right? Um, 94, if you run it, want to run it, we have 95%, all right? Uh, as against um, this, the random forest that is doing 87% and the K fold for the random forest uh, regressor, which is doing 76%. All right, so this is a bit doing a bit good on that, but don't forget that this is actually on the training data. All right, so if we check it on the testing data, let's see how it is uh, it's going to do on the testing data. All right, we have we have 80, 80, uh, 80, 88 percent here. All right, this is going to be the same thing. So we have eighty eight percent um compared to ninety four percent. So the gap is still huge. So we can say that this one is also over overfitting, all right? It's, it's somehow overfitting. So uh, we can also do some model tuning and then see how um, this is, is, is going to work. All right, so now uh, let's check the error that is doing, like that 30, 31 as compared to uh, random forest that is um, having the error, right? Random forest was actually having an error of um, 31. Yeah, it was also having a, an error of 31. So this one is also having an error of that of that range. All right. Now we can we can actually add this this accuracy which is eighty eight percent. All right. All right. We can add it to what we were doing earlier on. So okay. So now you see that how this and everything is coming together. We have the random forest. We have the accuracy. We have the random forest and the K fold that we built on the random forest. We have the accuracy for that. We have the gradient boost regressor. Then we have the um the accuracy for that all right so we're going to go continue with this and then keep on adding all these accuracies together and the name of the particular algorithm so let's perform some k fold cross validation on this um gradient booster regress as well all right so the same thing that we did earlier on the same thing that we're doing here nothing changes all right nothing changes we're just doing the same thing as you can see k equals 20 and split equals the k random state equals 70 and the cross vowel score, right? The same model, performing it on the X or Y, and then the CV equals um, K fold, right? So we're going to do this experiment twenty times as we did for as we did for for this, all right? We're going to do the same thing and then get get um, various scores and then find the mean of that, right? Calculate the mean of that and the absolute. It's eleven o'clock. Of that, all right? And then it's eleven o'clock. If we do that, right? If we do that. Now we are having um seventy we can see seventy seven percent right if you want to run it into two decimal places we can see seventy seven percent here all right so we're going to add this we're going to add this accuracy to um to what we are already doing so now you can see how everything is everything is put in together so um we we first did for gradient boost regressor all right and then after that we perform some K food 
um, cross validation on that, all right, to test different different um, hyperparameters, about 20 experiments, and then after that we have in 77%, we add this onto um, our data frame that we're building for the various algorithms. So we're going to do what is called the other boosting regressor too, and then see how um, this one will also perform, right? So don't forget we're all doing uh, regression. This is a regression problem, so we're using um, regressor, right? Regressor for all the other, uh, all the algorithms that we are doing over here, okay? So now, the same way we're initializing it, all right? After initializing it, then we fit it. Okay, we fit it on the training data, which is the X train and the Y train, right? Then after that, uh, after we run that and everything goes on well, we make some predictions. So this is just the same format that we do for all the algorithms, right? We first initialize, we fit, when we perform some predictions, after that we check the score, right? So this one is doing 82%, all right? This one is doing 82% over here right if we check um this is actually going to be um 76 right this is, is actually um we store it over here right the, don't forget this one is doing it on the training data so obviously it's going to perform well but um even even on the training data it's not performing as much as it's supposed to um perform 82 is a bit low considering the fact that the model has already learned from this x train and the y train Right, it's supposed to go beyond 90 and above, 95 and above, right? Considering the fact that it has already seen this data. But it's still not doing that well, right? It's still not doing that well. And when we perform this on the testing data, we can see that we are having um, around 77%, right? Which is a bit low, okay? And then um, this is actually going to give us the same thing because we're performing this on the testing data, all right? Then after that, we are going to also um, check the error that we have here and then you can see that the error is quite huge as compared to the other that we're having 31 31 this is very 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 huge all right so we can see that it's actually um, performed badly all right then we're going to add this accuracy right we're going to add this 76.7 um, percent we're going to actually add this onto the data frame that we're building for the accuracy. all right so we have it here all right, we have it here. And then um, moving on, we also perform some k-fold cross-validation. So as you can see, we perform the algorithm itself, and then we perform some k-fold um, cross-validation on the, on the same algorithm as we do for all of them. All right, so we did other boosting regress, and now we're going to perform k-fold cross-validation uh, for other boost regressor. Uh, I mean, other boost boosting regressor. All right, then after that, um, I mean, the same thing that we're doing over there, right? The same thing that we're, uh, thing that we're doing there. Nothing changes, just the model. I mean, different model that we are fitting for different algorithm, all right? Different model that we are building for different algorithm. The same 20 times experiment that we're going to do over here. Then after that, we find the mean of these um, results. Remember that re these results are going to comprise of different um, different different uh, results, right? Performing it 20 times, right? K equals 20 over here, all right? So performing it 20, 20 different experiments, you're going to get 20 different accuracies. Then after that, we find the mean of these accuracies to get um, just one accuracy that we can actually um, do with. So this error is just, just this random state, which is we can even ignore, which is unnecessary to actually bring all right because the shuffle is already off you can bring shuffle equals true then it will um, take away this ignore i mean this warning okay so we can see that this performance is quite low now if we actually let's let's add this before we check the error here right now we are going to add this accuracy to to what we already have in here right so we are at five and we are having this now we're going to add this to it to become six, all right? So the K-fold one is doing very bad, all right? It's doing very bad here, all right? So now let's do the same thing for KNN. Let's do the same thing for KNN. Now for KNN, we don't know the K that we're supposed to choose. So we're going to test the different Ks, right? Starting from one, to, I mean, for the range of one to 45, right? We don't know uh, what K that we are supposed to choose. Remember for K and then you have to choose um, K wisely because the, 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 
the key that you choose will have effect, right? So for instance, if you have um, different data points, like say um, this, that, 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 that. All right, and then uh, let me bring a different one here. Probably this. Okay, then you have another one. Maybe you have some other data points over here. Okay, so now if, if a new data point comes in, right, a new data point comes in, like um, let's say we put that data point here. We say this is a new data point, right? Now the number of key that you choose, k represents the neighbors that you choose, the number of neighbors that you choose. So let's say we are choosing, uh, um, considering, considering the distance, let's say we choose this number of neighbors, right? So let's say something like this. So one, two, three, four, five, five neighbors, right? Now in this case, uh, if we want to classify this point as red or blue, then obviously we are going to classify it as red because red dominates in this, right? However, if we widen this to maybe something like this, then maybe this um, point will not be red, maybe it will be classified as blue, all right? So the number of key that you choose is actually going to have an effect on the classification that, I mean, the association that is going to associate here, right? The, the I mean, um, the classification actually is that it's going to actually do over here. So we have to be very careful with the k that we choose. In this case, we don't know what k that we are supposed to choose. So we're going to test um, different k from um, k equals from k equals say from k equals one, um, k equals two, all right, um, k equals say three, all the way to k equals forty five. That's what we're going to do over here. All right. So we will be doing that in this range, right? And then um, the neighbors, that's the K neighbors that I just showed, right? So the number of neighbors we don't know, so we test. So for I in this range, right? For any number in, in this range, for, for I equals one, for I equals two, for I equals three, all the way to I equals 45, right? That's what we are setting the neighbors for, all right? And then after that, we test it several. So we're going to do this experiment, I mean, several times, right? And then uh, we fit the model, right? We fit it on the training and the testing. We make some predictions, and then after that, we append everything that we have in this this. Um. Then after that, we append everything here, right? We append uh, we append everything here in this empty um, list, right? We append everything in this empty list. Okay, so we're doing that, and then uh, we can plot and then see. Um, what different different values of k is actually doing? So over here, what it's doing? We just setting we just setting the 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 figure size to be twelve six, meaning that we have we want the length to be twelve and then the width to be six. All right, just 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 like that. So let me zoom um, out so that you can see it clearly over here. All right, and then uh, from range of one to forty five, as we did over. Over here, right from range of uh, one to forty five, that is the different values of the k. All right, and then the color we want it to be blue, that is the blue um, tick lines that we can see over here. All right, and then um, we want it to be dashed, that's why we're seeing um, dash here. And then O is just the point that you have over here, All right? The point, the point, the various points that you have here, and then the color is supposed to be red, the size is supposed to be 10, that's all. So, and then um, the title, right, uh, different k values, that's what is put in over here, all right, different k values, and then the k values, which is supposed to be the x label, which is here, x labels, and then the um, y label is supposed to be mean error, that's what we've plot over here, all right? So, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's not anything difficult, but you can see that when k equals um, somewhere between, uh, somewhere between zero and then maybe um, five or something like that, Right, so that's when k the the maximum um, value of k that will give us the best score is actually lying. So k equals somewhere uh, maybe two or three was giving us around ninety um, maybe ninety nine or something percent over here. But k equals um, k maybe ninety ninety eight point nine or something like that. But k equals maybe four or five or something like that over here is. 
actually giving us a good score, right? But apart from that, the K, um, the score is not actually increasing again. It's flat over here. So we don't need to go beyond this value, right? If you can see um, here, we are choosing the K equals, um, the K equals say three, all right? So um, let, me, let me just bring this and then um, let's choose this one down. So maybe um, K will be something like that. Maybe zero, one, two, three, something like that. So K equals three was actually giving us a good, a good, um, a good score. And apart from that, it's not making any impact again. It's not going up, all right? It's not going up. So we're going to use K equals three instead of uh, maybe testing for different Ks again, we're going to use K equals three because we were not sure what K we are supposed to use. That's why we test for different Ks, all right? For K neighbors, we test for different Ks and then we go to the right K, all right? So this is, this is um, another, another way of testing for a way to choose the best K, all right? And then after that, after fitting the model, we are going to we are going to make um we're going to make some predictions so we first fit over here we fit it on the training and then i mean the x train and the y train all right we make it a learn from the x train and then the y train after that we make some predictions okay so that we use it to make uh we use it to make some predictions okay so let me we are not here yet after that we use it to make some predictions over here all right then um making the predictions we can check the score all right so it's making like um 91 percent you can you can convert it to two decimal places as 91 percent all right and then uh we can check this which which actually i mean this is this is on the training on the training data let me point that out this is on the training data and it's doing 90 91 percent which is i mean a bit low all right and and uh i mean on the testing data you can see that it's making 75%. Obviously, if it is not performing that good on the training data, then we don't expect it to be performing good on the testing data as well. All right. So um, after that, we can check the, the, the error. You can see that the error is quite huge. All right. The error is quite huge. All right. So I'm going to add this accuracy, which is 75%. Um, um, all right. The accuracy on the testing data, which is 75%. I'm going to add that to what we're already having. All right, to what we already have in over here. Okay, so we are going to have um, at seven, all right, at index of seven. That's what I'm specifying here at index of seven. And then I'll put the accuracy there. All right, I'll add the accuracy over there. All right, and this is just um, KNN underscore DF. It's the same thing I'm putting here, combining the results and the KNN. All right, so when I do that, you can see that at seven, we have the KNN regress at there. Right, the KNN regressor is doing 75 and it's there. All right, so we just add, keep on adding all these accuracy so that we can check the overall accuracy and let's see which one is doing better at the end, right? So let's perform some K fold validation on this um, KNN regressor as we did for other, um, as we did for the other algorithms, all right? So we're going to do the same thing for KNN, all right? We're going to do the same thing for KNN here, okay? So, um, the same way as we did for for the other one right we're going to perform 20 different experiments and get 20 different scores and then after that we find the mean of that all right we find the mean of that okay so if we do that we see that we have our um around 69 or 70 percent if you want to convert all right i mean uh yeah around 69 or 70 percent all right so um we can actually add this this cross validation of, uh, for KNN, right? We can also add this, right? We can also add this. So KNN K fold is also giving us sixty nine percent, all right? So we keep on adding this, and then uh, we can also do what is called a bargain regressor, right? We can also do what is called a bargain regressor. So um, as you seen earlier on, it's the same way we initialize it, then we fit it, all right? We initialize it, then we fit it. Okay, so we're going to fit it on the X train and then the Y train, right? Then after that, uh, after running it, uh, we can actually uh, make some predictions and store the predictions in the Y predict, all right? Then uh, we can check the score, all right, on the training, right? We can check how it is doing on the training data and how it's doing on the testing data. So if we check it on the training data, we can see that it's doing 97%, a bit good, right? Quite good, 
and then uh, if we check it on the testing um on the testing data set it's doing 86 percent um it's supposed to be a bit closer to this 97 percent not that far all right so and there are still um some hyperparameters that we can tune over there all right and then over here um we just, it's just going to be the same score over here right so that we can actually use it to to add it to um this this compilation of the algorithms and their addresses all right so let's let's do that let's um this is the error all right we see that er error here is a bit less right the error here is a bit less as compared to the others all right okay so now we're going to add this um key food um I mean, uh, we're going to add this 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 score for bargain regressor, all right? For bargain regressor, we're going to add it to what we already have already there, all right? So um, the last one was KNN regressor K four. Now we're adding the bargain regressor and the score of it over here, all right? Now we can perform K four cross validation just like we did for the other uh, algorithms. We can also perform a K four cross validation. On this and then check for different different experiments and then see how it's also going to do for us and then find the mean of this score right so when you're running this just ignore this just take off this or maybe you can just set um, shuffle equals true right just copy this one shuffle equals true and then put it there all right or otherwise you can just delete random underscore state and then uh, you get rid of this warning all right now this one is giving us 72 or 73 percent here right accuracy for 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 the bargain regressor when we check the k food cross validation all right so we can go ahead and then add this we can go ahead and then add this accuracy all right bargain regressor k food we can add it there all right so right i mean so far we've been able to compile about 10 of them all right um each of the algorithm and their cross validation all right we've been able to add them okay now let's also test for support vector regressor and then see how it's also going to do right so as i said we first initialize it right so for this uh, for the support vector reg uh, regressor we are setting the kernel to be linear right so there are several kernels that you can also uh, use in the lines of rbf and others all right so in this case we're going to set it to linear all right so you can also change this one i mean if it's, the model is not performing well you can also come and change this this is part of the hyper parameter tuning right these are some of the parameters that you can change by yourself right that's why we call them hyper parameter tuning because they are parameters that you yourself can change all right they are not parameters that are fit i mean fixed that you cannot change you can actually change them all right so if the model is not performing well you can actually come and change it and then see how it's actually going to do for you. all right so when we run everything is working well for us and then we make some predictions just like we did for the others we make some prediction on the testing data that our model has not seen all right and then we store the results here okay now we can check the performance of our model right we can check the performance of our model on the training data we can check the performance on the training data now if we do that we can see that even on the training data is doing very very bad 72 or 73 percent on the training data this is a data that our model has already learned from and if it's performing this then you have to expect the i mean perform the performance on the testing data to be very 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 low right now let's check it on that now you can see that's 65 percent right 65 percent which is very bad all right 65 percent which is very bad okay now um what we can do is to actually um check the error right so there uh, you see the error is very high 90 which is very so far this is the highest error that we've, we've been able able to achieve all right so this this actually is not a good one to go with this um support vector regressor is not a good one to go with with respect to our pro our, our problem statement here our, our data set that we are working on here all right it might perform very well in other data sets but not this one here is not performing well all right so we can actually add this one to the various algorithm that we are compiling all right so if we run that we can see that the support we have support vector regressor over here all right so we can keep on and then also do um the k food for that so let me just write over here um let me bring this one so this one is a k fold it's a k food cross validation 
um, for SVR, right? Support vector regressor. Okay. Let me just make it a little bit bolder. Okay. So now the same way that we did for the, uh, I mean, the other algorithms earlier on, the same thing that we're going to do over here. All right, we're just going to run it. Um, in this case, we're going to run it 10 times, all right? Instead of um, the other, other, other ones that we did for 20 times, we're going to do this um, for 10 times, all right? And by the way, you can just do it as many times as you want. I mean, it's, it's hyper parameter, so you can do it. Uh, you can change the parameters, pay your own, I mean, uh, pay your own judgment or pay your own tuition here. All right, so doing that, we have 67%, something like that. All right, and it's quite low. I mean, this algorithm is not actually helping us, all right? So we can add this accuracy also there, all right? So that later on we can actually see and then um, see how we are going to deal with it. Okay. So now what we can also do is to check for SG boost regressor. All right, we can check for SG boost regressor. So we will stop with this one here, and then in the next video, we will start with the SG boost regressor, and then keep on adding these algorithms and their performance to our um, to our our data frame that we've created here. All right, so see you in the next video.